here we go again, I'm back with the bows. If you don't know how this works, I'll be taking six major areas of Elden Ring and finding the most powerful bow weapons for each area. In this challenge, I'll be region locked, which means I can't progress past an area until I kill the main boss, and I have to try the best I can to find the most powerful bow build for each area. Anyway, that's all there is, let's get going. Starting off, I chose the samurai because it has the longbow and I died to the giant crab. But I somehow survived and ended up talking to Bloodman. Then I found Kale at the Church of Ella, and I think it's a good time to mention that merchants are going to be extremely helpful for this challenge, mainly because somehow they have an infinite number of arrows to sell. For my first advancement, I trotted down to Fort Height to grab cookbook number 6, Bleeding Arrows. Then I teleported back to the Church of Ella to go southwest and find a different merchant who sold the shortbow. Using the shortbow and the longbow, I could destroy anything at any range. And speaking of destroying, I'd like to tell you about War Thunder. Out of all the games wanting me to talk about their game, I've been waiting for this one. I got this game right after I saw Top Gun Maverick, and it's even better than I expected. Not only is there over 2,000 different vehicles, such as tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships, but every vehicle is designed amazingly. And combined with the most outstanding graphics, this is the most immersive game I've ever played. There's also not just vehicles from today, but it stretches over a hundred years of development. From flying a rust bucket in the 1920s to a fully fledged fighter jet, this game has a ton of room for customization. While I would want to show you some of my footage, sometimes I make the most outrageous mistakes. But those mistakes, like cannonballing into another plane, can create some of the most hilarious and memorable moments in all of gaming. So right now, I am just urging you to try War Thunder using my link in the pinned comment, because it's now for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. And if you sign up right now, you can get a large bonus pack which is available for only a limited time only. This includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more. Anyway, back to Elden Ring, so I challenged Ghost Elmer. I mean, until I ran out of arrows and had to switch to my sword to kill him. And it's not like I'm killing this guy just for fun. He drops a gray circular ball, which allows me to buy thin beast bones to make infinite numbers of super cool arrows. And with my bought or crafted super cool arrows, I challenged Margit. First, I used the short bow to inflict every status effect in my arsenal, like poison this guy stinks! and bleed. After that, I would like to give a Hall of Fame nomination to Bow Jump Attacks and the High Damage Ash of War Mighty Shot on the Longbow. One thing I noticed throughout the fight is I didn't even get one stagger, so maybe bows can't stagger. Anyway, I just chipped him down with hundreds of arrows and eventually got him. Down goes Mr. Margit. Before heading into Stormvale, I went to this random tower in Loomgrave and grabbed the Arrow's Reach Talisman. This will help pick off the most annoying enemies. I also got the classic Green Dog Talisman from Under Summon Water Village. Now that we've accessed a round table, I went to the secret room under it and got the Black Key Crossbow. But what's actually important is the bolts. There's only 90 of these in the entire game, and they inflict Scarlet Rot. Next, I farm for the Golem Greatbow at the end of Godric's Great Rune Bridge. It may have taken me 30 minutes, but this thing is going to destroy Godric. Finally, with three bows shooting many different arrows all in one hand, this was going to be a slow but cinematic murder scene. In this stage, I used many different bows, so for my main weapons, I used the short bow, golem great bow, and the black key crossbow. And for my side weapons, I used the long bow and the katana. Some arrows I used were the great arrows, poison arrows, and bleeding arrows, and of course, the black key bolts. For my armor and talismans, I used the full samurai set, the green dog talisman, and the arrows reach talisman. Feel my bloody wrath. What's it to you? Now that I've conquered Limgrave and all its amazing bow weapons, I can now move on to Liurnia. But it turns out, in Liurnia, there's only two bow class upgrades, so I included Kaelid and Liurnia as one area. So first, I got the Volcano Manor invitation from doing a bit of Raya's questline, and then for some reason, I teleported up to EG and went into the Royal Magic House. In here, I somehow had the balls to challenge Loretta with a wooden bow, and it actually didn't go that bad. I just dodged all of her blue sword missiles, and when she tried to summon more of them, I would have enough time to get a big attack off. You know what? I surprised myself. I suck at this game. 
By killing Loretta, I was now able to meet Pidia, who sold me Glintstone Cookbook number 7, which allowed me to finally make cold arrows. Before heading any further, I took one stop in the Lakeside Crystal Cave to grab the Thrusting Talisman. I read that this talisman increases all counterattack damage by 15%, which includes bows. Now that I got everything related to bows and Lyurnia, I entered Kaelid. First, I bought Cookbook number 15 from this merchant to make tons of rot arrows. And then I took down a giant white dragon, After that, I explored the abandoned cave, not only for the pink butterflies to craft rot arrows, but I eventually picked up the serpent bow. While a wooden pulley machine associated with snakes sounds amazing, this bow is trash. If only I could change the Ash of War to Barrage, this would be the best bow in the game. To increase my arrow damage, I went and got the arrow sting talisman, and then I went to try my luck at Red Wolf and Ronala. And first with Red Wolf, it actually went really well. I first tried using bleed arrows, but he was so jumpy I never got a proc, so I just kept on moving. I'm not seeing and that's all it took, Red Wolf down. Next, I tried my hand at Renala, and I knew this was gonna be rough. In her first phase, I got up really close to her minions and kind of just poked them with an arrow, but when she fell to the ground, I used some mass poison arrow spamming, and that brought me to her second phase. Since you can't buy an unlimited amount of big arrows until you defeat Radon, I was left with a small bow, and with this thing, victory was impossible. Time to go back to scratch, which actually meant trying to take on Radon instead. And fortunately for me, he left some of his super cool arrows on the field, so I used them against him. I used the stones to destroy the stones. I even tried to inflict Rot, which he's extremely weak to. And that's all it took. With the help of my trusty crew, we took him down. After the fight, I immediately teleported to the round table hold to get the lion gray bow as well as infinite numbers of his spears. And after that, it was time to re-challenge Ranala, but this time I had much heavier artillery. In the first phase, I used my small bow to kill the small children and used the lion's gray bow on Ranala herself. But in the second phase, things went so much better than last time. First of all, not only can my bow knock her down so she can't use any attacks, but she didn't even fully stand up until I took half of her health. And the rest is history. We exchanged. Finally, Renala is dead, and these two combined areas are conquered. In this combined stage, for my main weapons, I use the Radon Bow and the Short Bow, and for my side weapons, I use the Golden Great Bow. Also, the arrows I used are bought from the Finger Lady after defeating Radon. For my armor and talismans, I use Half Samurai, Half Foot Soldier set, the Thrusting Talisman, the Arrow's Reach Talisman, and the Arrow's Sting Talisman. Now that I've conquered Limgrave, Ligurnia, and Kaelid, I can now explore three upper-ish parts of the map, Volcano Manor, Altus Plateau, and the Royal Capital. So first, I rode around collecting Golden Seeds and Tears, and then I came across a prophet. Battles waged in the realms of Elden's lore, Goldmask stands on the precipice evermore. A sentinel in armor, radiant and bold, yet beneath the gold, a story to be told. In the echoes of Elden, his name resounds, a warrior, a mystic, where destiny sounds. Goldmask, a legend in the annals of time, in Elden Ring's embrance, his verses rhyme. Tell me something. After that, I went up into Volcano Manor to meet the best merchant of all time. Not only does he sell infinite great arrows, but explosive great bolts for the ballista. For even more damage, I killed Queen Gilica in this weird dungeon to get the Ritual Sword Talisman. And with that, I headed further into Volcano Manor, grabbed Sleepy Cookbook 1 and 2, and challenged Godskin Noble. Having sleep arrows is already a cheese, but raw and bleed arrows is way too much. Even though it did take 5 minutes because of status effects, Godskin down. While there's no reward for directly killing Godskin, I can open this secret room, and go down all these cages to get to a somber seven. Without defeating Morgoth, these are so hard to get. My next stop was at Volcano Cave, and surprisingly, I found another demi-human queen. And just like the one guarding the ritual sword, she was pretty easy and went down really fast. What she drops may be a little controversial, but it's the jar cannon. Now, is this a bow? No. But is it a ballista? Yes. And I even made a community post asking people if I could use it, and they said yes. So next, I knocked the Draconic Tree Sentinel off a ledge, and entered the capital. Apart from killing this tree for a super big rune, there's not much else to do, so I took a chance at Gold Godfrey. One key feature of Godfrey is he loves taking time to get to you. So I used it to my advantage, and just ran away, shot him, ran away, shot him. And through repetition of a good process, you will always find success. Godfrey down. And I think everyone knows what's next. We get to fight a homeless man. The fuck you say to me? These foolish 
To help me out because I shoot so slowly, I summoned Melina. And this worked. She pretty much took all of the aggro while I stayed in the corner shooting my little arrows. I really don't know how Melina has this much health. Although, nearing the end of the fight, Melina actually died. But I did get one shot off to kill him. As much as I want to keep going onto the mountaintops, I think I'm going to stop it here. Not only is there barely any more upgrades, but I've been having a pretty terrible time with the bows. You see, in my heart, I'm a strength player. I like smashing bosses to pieces with huge weapons, and this balloons tower defense shooter isn't doing it for me. It almost feels draining to play this way, and I recommend anyone using bows to use them as a side weapon. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you guys one more time to try War Thunder, because if you sign up now, you get a free bonus pack for multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and the 3D decoration and much more and it's free on xbox pc and playstation so uh yeah thanks for watching see ya